This is Hidden Killers Week in Review. A look back at the most prolific stories of the week. This is the Hidden Killers Podcast with Tony Bruschi. Featuring author, psychologist, and daily contributor, Siobhan Scott. How do you legislate stupidity on this one? Yeah. Uh, if, if you have... Because uh, I'm just thinking, like, if 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 there had been legislation in place, if something this, if there had already been a, a case of the Crumblies, which I'm sure there actually has been, we've just never gone after them. Yeah. Um. But let's say that the Crumblies already existed. It, it, would uh, any sort of law or any sort of example have changed their demeanor in this one iota? They they seem to be completely thinking, well, why would I be worried about my son with a gun? I mean, he only, like, made these rants about suicidal and homicidal ideology, but bah, mm -hmm. no big deal. I, I don't know that a whole lot would have changed. It's kind of like driving through a rainstorm and you can't see anything, and the idiots who don't turn on their, their windshield wipers or their headlights. It's like, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, there's nothing I can do to convince you that you should do this. There's no radio mm -hmm. voice that's going to tell you to do that and will convince you. Is there anything that can convince or, or, or would legislation change anything? Would it up parents' uh, responsibility? Uh, obviously, it would on paper, but would it actually in action up them taking responsibility and doing something to prevent these sort of things from happening? Yeah, a couple things come to mind. There, There is pretty good data that in um, states that have passed safe storage laws, so, you know, it's very specifically lined out how guns must be stored, mm -hmm. and there are legal penalties um, that gun violence deaths go down. Mm -hmm. uh, so we do think that it's going to help. The other thing that comes to mind is, you know, when we cracked down on drunk drivers and people started getting really stiff fees, they had to go to classes for a first offense. And then with each offense, the penalties got stiffer and stiffer up to jail time. Mm -hmm. And people who committed a drunk driving offense where someone was killed, charged with murder, um, it has made an impact. Mm -hmm. And so we have fewer people drunk driving than we used to have. So, you know, even if it saves a dozen lives, mm -hmm. um, I, I think it's worth doing. You know? Would this be essentially going forward every time there's a school shooting, uh, there's an immediate investigation into the parents of that shooter. Just it's, it's triggered immediately. Um, and, and, we take a look, but then I guess the question is, what is the bar for this? Obviously, with the Crumblies, it's pretty clear how irresponsible they were. I mean, that that's not up for debate, but the thing is that that's not all cases by any means. No. Um, and, no. and there's a lot of cases where parents are striving, trying to get their kids on track, trying to get yeah. them the help that they need. And yes. I think a lot of parents sometimes feel trapped in their own home with a potentially dangerous human being with not many ways out of that situation because yeah. the resources don't exist. Yeah. Yeah. And that's where we get into the whole lack of social support network mm -hmm. for parents and families. And I would never say that I think in every case, parents should be held criminally liable, although they usually are civilly sued, mm -hmm. you know, when this happens. So it's a tough one. It's really a tough one. And of course, the more we can catch these kids upstream rather than downstream and try to intervene with support and help. Um, there's one thing that I think all states should do, which now there's only a handful of states, is mandate that every school have um, something the Secret Service calls a threat assessment team. And that's um, where you have a combination of mental health therapists trained very specifically in assessing people for the potential for violence, not the school guidance counselor, mm -hmm. but certain kinds of mental health professionals with law enforcement people on a team. And whenever there's a kid, you know, writing stories about murder or drawing pictures of guns or, you know, coming to school with bullets in their backpack or whatever they're doing, um, that kid is isolated immediately from the school environment and assessed by a threat assessment team who go over all these details and what's happening in the family. And I think that if we had more states who 
you know, instigated this kind of law, we would see more prevention. And that would be one thing that the government, federal government is encouraging states to do that. Florida did it um, after Parkland, mm -hmm. but most of our states have not done that yet. So I think that's one thing that we could do that would help. How far in the states that have instituted it, and it's probably a little bit different from state to state, but the states that have instituted it, um, how involved and how in-depth does it go then beyond the walls of that school? I understand sitting down, talking to the student, really and trying to investigate this. But at the end of the day, they go back home. And, and, and what sort of leeway or, or what sort of powers, I guess, would be the correct word, do the authorities have into going into that home yes. and saying, yes, uh, what's going on here is not OK, because you can be a, a gun owner or, or just someone who's just kind of an idiot uh, and, and not necessarily be creating an abusive or a, an unsafe household right. for those people. But you can be a complete moron and, and one can look at them and go, this is the chaos waiting to happen. But no crime has been committed yet other than right. these people are really incompetent. Um right. Incompetence isn't illegal. Uh, so, so how? I guess what what are they doing in those states beyond the the, the realm of the school uh, to actually try and make an impact where the child spends far more of their time? Right, and that's one of the things that again it's going to differ from state to state, and probably even differ from school district to school district. But that is the idea: is that the people on the threat assessment team, somebody is appointed to work with the family and to go out and assess what what weapons are in the home, what kind of access can this cat kid have, and try to get people into treatment where they need some kind of mental health treatment, get the kid into treatment and come up with a very specific plan in each of these cases where they do find that there's a risk. So I think it's a pretty good idea. And I don't think it would cost that much to implement. I, and I, yeah. the federal government, there are books that they put out that you can get for free that talk about how to set this kind of program up. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think it's a great idea. I just wonder, you know, how, how do you, how do you implement it, especially just kind of with the mindset of a lot of folks of, you ain't taking my gun away. I'm going to do what I'm going to do. I want a parent. Most people who are of this mindset are don't take too kindly to individuals coming into their home, telling them how to parent yeah. or where to put their weapons. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's one of those things. There's probably no perfect solution, but my gosh, we've got to do something. Yeah. And again, even if it only prevents, uh, you know, one school massacre, it's, it's, certainly worth a try. Yeah. And I do think that there have, you know, one of the things that we don't hear about in the news is all the cases where school shootings are prevented because mm -hmm. there's been intervention by someone. That's not really tracked data. No. And I think, you know, there would be far more if we weren't doing what we're doing. I think it's 30% of the schools in the U.S. have a mental health professional, not not a guidance counselor, but a trained therapist in the schools to try to address kids like mm -hmm. Ethan Crumley and try to catch them before they go down that path. And I think if we could get that up to 100 percent of the schools, you know, we'd be yeah. doing a great thing. Or, or more than one, uh, because again, you're you're talking yes. about one person then for yes. hundreds of people. You which, named it. That's, yeah. that's one of the problems. Yeah. Is but we got to start start somewhere and, and start, start moving somewhere. That. And even if we had one to handle the most disturbed kids, um, it's it's really scary when you talk with teachers. Yeah. With the number of disturbed kids now that they're seeing oh, yeah. in their classrooms and they can't manage them. So yeah, I mean it, the that's the reality of it. I, mean, I got kids who are in school right now and, and I talk about it and I hear about it and, you know, I see it sometimes just, you know, going into the schools and it's, it, it's not, uh, it's not the 1990s. It's not the eighties. It's yeah. not even the early two thousands anymore no. of the way that, that some of us may remember uh, school uh, being where there's, you know, a couple of those kids off in the corner that were kind of quiet and they're kind of the more questionable ones. It's a good chunk of people these days. I mean, a, yeah. a far greater percentage and it's almost kind of normalized because there's mm -hmm. so uh, there, there's so much trauma it seems and 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 you feel mm -hmm. bad that people are suffering these ways and they don't see any other outlet uh, other than than this sort of violence sometimes mm -hmm. let me ask you this with with this uh this case obviously it's talking about a parent and the responsibility down to a child but we're talking about a household here uh 
do you think we're going to see any sort of uh, legislation or or cases like this in the future where it's maybe not necessarily the kid that went in and shot up the school, but maybe it's it's the husband, it's the wife, it's it's somebody who is an adult um, that goes off and, and does something horrible, not necessarily to school, maybe a workplace. But the other members of the House ignored signs just like this, just change the ages, basically, and, and say that, um, oh, my, yeah, my my husband had been saying these things or had these sort of ideologies, but, you know, whatever, I'm, you know, and you could argue a lot there, too, of, you're fearing for your own life and your own safety. Sure. But are we going to start holding more people accountable within households where there are a thousand warning signs going on and nothing is ever said and done uh, and until something horrible happens? Should that be uh, should that be pushed stronger as well? If you're in a home with someone who's seemingly having the potential to do this, you need to do something. You need to say something. Obviously, resources for them to protect themselves would be helpful before they go out and, and raise the red flag. Boy, that's a hard one. That's a hard one, isn't it? Yeah. And I think when you're talking about other adults, how much control and influence do they have over, let's say, a spouse? Mm -hmm. um, most of the time, if a person, I mean, you'll see this a lot in um, homes where there's been domestic violence, because usually it's a man who goes out and does a workplace shooting or whatever. Mm -hmm. And there is often a history um, of domestic violence with the spouse in that case. And I think spouses are more apt to report it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, often after when they're trying to leave the relationship, they're trying to get restraining orders and they'll say, by the way, he's got guns and he's talking about, you know, going to work and shooting people. Mm -hmm. um, again, we need to do a better job with preempting these things. And when people are telegraphing like that, it's a real red flag. So, so many big problems. And it's hard to think of, you know, an easy legislative solution that's going to solve it um, when we have so much trouble doing very basic things in our society, like how do people get health care and how do, mm. you know, we get the homeless yeah. off the street and, you know, we've, we've got our work cut out for <laughs> us here. I think that's a very uh, accurate way of putting it. <laughs> Sick of the ads? We are too. Start listening with no commercials now and get access to all of our episodes in advance of everyone else. Become a True Crime Today Premium Plus subscriber on Apple Podcasts. Search True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts or go to our podcast page and sign up now. True Crime Today Premium Plus. Sign up now.